Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn about constraint layout in Jetpack Compose. So as you already know, in XML, we have three types of layouts. Linear layout, relative layout, and constraint layout. Out of which, constraint layout was the most recommended layout. Now in Jetpack Compose, again we have three types of layouts. Column layout, row layout, and box layout. Then, where does this constraint layout come from in Jetpack Compose? It's an additional layout that can be used by adding an external dependency. Means, you can use constraint layout in Jetpack Compose too. Like in the column layout, two components are above or below each other vertically. While in the row layout, the components are beside each other horizontally. Then in the box layout, the components overlap each other. While in the constraint layout, the components can be linked to each other horizontally as well as vertically. Let's see how. So I will create a composable function as learn constraint layout. And done. Make sure to call it here inside the set content. Then the first thing that we need to do to use constraint layout is to add its dependency in the Gradle. So go to Gradle, add the constraint compose dependency. I will mention it in the description box. Click on sync now. And then, now come back to the main activity. We will create an example project to understand four main concepts of constraint layout in Jetpack Compose. First, how do we create a constraint layout? Second, about the dimensions in the constraint layout. Then third, our chains in constraint layout. And fourth, our guidelines in constraint layout. Got it? So first, let's see how we create a constraint layout. Inside the composable function, write constraint layout. Then inside it, we will create four buttons. Let's say red button. Green button, blue button, and black button. These are just the variables, not the button itself. So, in constraint layout, we assign variables as references by writing create refs. These variables will be assigned to the component that is the button. So, below it, we will create four buttons. I'll show you how to create one button, remaining three you will try, okay? So write button. I'll leave on click as blank. If you want, you can add a toast or any functionality. Then our first button is red button. Hence, I will give the button color as red. Then the text on the button as red. And that's it. Our red button is ready. Same way, I will create the other three buttons as well. And then, so we have a red button, green button, blue button, and black button. Got it? Now comes the important part. We have four buttons and we have four variables. So how do we assign each one of them respectively? So we have a concept in constraint layout called as constraint as. This constraint as is used to assign variables to their respective component. Like this is a red button. So I have assigned the red button variable to it. Similarly, I will assign the green button, blue button and black button as well using constraint as. And then, now once the variable and component are assigned, then it's time to link the components with each other using link to. So remember in constraint layout in XML, we used to have constraints from top to bottom or top to top or start to start and many more. 
Same way here we can link two components with each other using link to. I'll show you how. First I'll link the red button to its parent top. So write top link to parent top. Now this button is constrained to the top means attached to the top. Then below the red button I want a green button. So I'll write top link to red button's bottom. Means this green button's top is attached to the red button's bottom. Got it? Same way below the green button we will have our blue button. So to constrain them I'll write top link to green button's bottom. Then the same way I'll link the black button's top to the blue button's bottom. And then, now with the help of preview, I'll show you how it looks. See, all four buttons are constrained to each other vertically. So with the help of create refs, constraint as and link to, we can implement a constraint layout. Clear? Now, let's learn more additional things about it. Like dimensions. Remember how we used to have mash parent and rep content in XML? That is exactly what dimensions are. So let's change the dimension of the red button. Write width is equal to dimension as mash parent means the entire width will be as same as the screen's width. Then for the height, I can use mash parent or rep content or fill to constraint. You already know what wrap content is, right? It shrinks the component according to its size. Then what is field to constraint? It matches the constraint. And then there is one more thing called as value. Like if you want to give a custom size, then we can use value. So I'll keep the value as 100 dp. See, this is how it looks. So dimensions are clear. Now it's time to move to our next concept, which is a chain in constraint layout. So the chain is a method through which two components can be linked to each other in a particular style. Here in the chain, we have three types of styles. Spread, spread inside and packed. Let's see each one of them. So consider a situation where I want the green button as well as the blue button to be below the red button. So the green button is already below the red button. And I'll change the blue button also as below the red button. But look, both of them are overlapping each other. So to overcome this situation, we use the chain styles. Let's see how. Right, create a horizontal chain. You can use a vertical chain as per your requirement. Inside it, write green button and blue button because both of them are overlapping. And chain style as spread. C. Spread evenly distribute the buttons by making sure that they are still below the red button. Next, let's try spread inside. See, here both of them are constrained to their start and end. Then next is packed. In packed chain style, both of them are stuck to each other, but they are still below the red button without overlapping. Next is a guideline. Again, very simple. So a guideline is used as a helper. Remember in XML we used to have guidelines that help us to constrain the components properly. Same here as well. Also guidelines are not visible on the screen. They act as a ruler. So here I will create a guideline. I want the guideline to be at the bottom. Hence I'll go for create guideline from bottom. With a 0.01 .01 fraction. Means the space between the component and the bottom. Then I'll assign the guideline to the black button. I'll write the bottom link to the guideline. It's like instead of using any other component to link, we simply link it to the guideline. Now run the app and see. Look, the black button is linked to the bottom with a little bit of space and also guideline is not visible. While these two buttons are in a packed chain style and the red button with dimension is match parent. 
So a quick recap. We learnt about create refs, constraint as, linked to, chain styles, spread, spread inside and packed, and lastly the guidelines. Got it? So yeah, that is it for the video. If you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.